Hi everyone, my name is Elvis and welcome to Great Money Matters. In this episode of Working Capital Series, we are going to talk about the second component of the cash conversion cycle, continuing with debtor days. In this video, I will explain the variables within the formula that will be used to calculate debtor days, where the information comes from and why the information is used. I will also go through some examples so you get a better understanding. With that being said, let's get started. Let's move forward to the debtor days formula. You will notice in the numerator, which is above the line in this equation, we are looking at average accounts receivable. This information is obtained from the balance sheet, which is a snapshot of your financial position at a point in time. We will draw your attention to the accounts receivable line item located under current assets in the balance sheet highlighted here. This represents the key item we are going to be measuring. For this example, you will only see a snapshot for one period which represents the closing balance. Usually you would see multiple periods based on the time frame you are analysing. If you are analysing a full financial year, you would see the prior year data balance as well as the current year data balance, which basically represents a 365 day period. Or you could be analysing a previous month's balance along with the current month's accounts receivable value, which represents a 30 day period. The average accounts receivable represents the opening debtor balance plus closing debtor balance divided by two to obtain an average for a particular period. In our example, we will only need to refer to a single period value. You will also need to consider the period based on your industry, seasonality and the strategy of your business as this will affect your analysis. Now. Let me draw your attention below the line in the equation referring to the denominator. You will notice the variable credit sales. This information comes from the profit and loss statement and it represents the performance of your business. You can see this highlighted on the top line item on the P&L. Just as a reminder, only refer to the sales that are on credit and not on cash basis. This is required as we have already received the money at point of sale and is not reported in the accounts receivable line item, which is the reference line we are analysing. So, if you sell a particular product on credit throughout the year, the revenue line item located in the profit and loss statement increases to record the sale and a corresponding entry to the accounts receivable line item is reported on the balance sheet. As you can see by now, there is a connection between credit revenue and accounts receivable. With that being said, let's continue with an example to help us deepen our understanding. In this example, we have accumulated a value of $1 million worth of accounts receivable from credit sales that have been made throughout the year. Usually, when customers pay back their outstanding debt within their agreed terms of 30 days or whatever terms you have agreed upon with your customers, the accounts receivable balance will reduce as soon as cash is received. If you had received all the outstanding debt from your customers, then the accounts receivable balance will be zero and this analysis is no longer required. To calculate the accounts receivable days, we would place the accounts receivable value of $1 million in the numerator, which is located above the line in this equation. We will then proceed to the profit and loss statement and obtain the revenue figure, which is usually the top line in the P&L. As mentioned before in our analysis, we are only concerned with the credit sales and not cash sales. The reason for this is if you had all cash sales in your business, then you would not have any accounts receivable balance and no need to carry out the calculation, as your accounts receivable days would be zero and hence no cash flow timing issue. So moving forward, we would place the $20 million worth of sales in the denominator, which is located at the bottom of the equation. Then the value from dividing $1 million by 20 million is then multiplied by 365 to give us the efficiency figure in terms of days. Here we see 19 days. This is pretty good as the value indicates that every 19 days on average, we will receive our entire accounts receivable balance in cash from our customers. Now let's look at an unfavorable situation. Let's say we recorded $20 million worth of credit sales throughout the year and we were unfortunate and none of our customers had paid us anything throughout the year for all the products or services we had sold or provided. 
As you can see, we would have a ratio of one based on the $20 million worth of average accounts receivable compared to the $20 million worth of revenue. Then we would multiply the ratio by 365 to convert to days. As you can see, we get an uncomfortable situation of 365 days, which basically indicates that we didn't collect a single dollar for 365 days. This would be a difficult situation for any small business to survive. Hopefully, the examples I had provided had brought the point home. And that's it. That's the end of this video. Thank you for sticking around till the end and make sure you continue by viewing the next video in the series on inventory days or accounts payable days, which will be concluded with a video on the cash conversion cycle. Thank you and until next time.